Hello, good morning everyone. Starting off chapter 7 of Higurashi. Let's see, mentions of the difficulty. The final truth. That's good. This story introduces the unit inside and out, using all the actors. This is no longer a story. It's a public autopsy for all to join. As they say... After loving everyone, after loving someone, cut open their belly and eat their organs. It's the same with stories. The difficulty is quite mild, well suited for those with pride. Hmm, <laughs> shiny. Almost looks like a movie. What are you doing? I don't see you playing by yourself that often. All you could do before was to nod to my questions. Since when do you have your own will? I'm glad. I finally have a sister or a brother. Whichever you are. I used to be in existence of nothingness, just like you. But one day, I began to have my own identity, my own thoughts, and eventually, my own body. So it's not a surprise to see you in position of your own will. Welcome to this vast yet tiny world, my sister. You might be my brother, but let me call you my sister until I know for sure. This is an endless, eternal, and infinite world, but that doesn't mean it's boundlessly vast. I suppose you could describe it like a ring with a small diameter. While the ring is an eternal, endlessly looping world, that doesn't mean it contains infinite space. Yes, in short, this world is eternally sealed. The future is supposed to be an infinite weave of countless choices. Yet for whatever reason, our world always ends in death. If our world compared to something, perhaps a maze of fate would be appropriate. Looping through the same moments forever, steadily grows harder and more dejecting, eventually producing something like me. Then, as that draws further on, even one like you is born, and eventually this world may be filled with your sisters too. After that, we'll build a colony inside of it, and once we lose our interest in this maze, Rika Furude will disappear from this world. It looks like you still cling to this narrow world, Rika. Though I lost interest long ago. Which is why I'm truly glad you were born for me to talk to. So what are you doing? Are you collecting fragments of memory? It's a bit hard. Is it just all Rikas? No, that looks like... Um, well, there's me on Sadako. Hmm. Oh, there's only five or six of them right now. It must still be fun for you, though. There used to be more fragments long ago, but one by one they disappeared into the darkness. Now, these are the only ones that remain clear. Five or six. Six chapters. Oh, that's not how you're supposed to use it. See? Try and hold it up to the light. All of that is the life of Rika Furude and its end. That one is... Oh, I remember that one. That's the world when Keiichi was cursed. Those fragments are like books to me, so I titled that one the Onikakushi chapter. Do you remember what happened in that one? Good. That makes things easier. In Onikakushi, Keiichi Maibara was consumed by the darkness. <laughs> he couldn't accept the kind words his friends offered him, and eventually beat them to death, not knowing of their kindness. We were all killed after that, anyway. That had nothing to do with his story, though. That fragment is the Watanagashi chapter. Shion Sonazaki was cursed in that one. But you think it was Mia on the whole time. She killed many people out of revenge for her boyfriend's disappearance, as he went missing in 1982. Rika worked so hard, but she was captured at the end, and she was tortured to death. I guess they can... no. That's why she chose to commit suicide in the Meikashi chapter. Oh, because things were going to turn out the same way. That fragment over there is called the Tatarigoshi chapter. It's the Sato's uncle came back and locked her up inside his, her house. 
That was the worst world of all. There was nothing Riku was able to do in that world. Whenever Satoko's uncle comes back, Riku usually just gives up on that world. Fortunately, Satoko's uncle doesn't come back that frequently. That one was called the Sumi Horoboshi chapter. Riku was there until just a moment ago. Ren and Ryugu was possessed in that world. It was pretty exciting to see her take over the whole school. It surprised me to learn that Keiichi Maibara had a memory of the other worlds, just like we do. It was pretty amazing, but then again, most of us have some kind of memory like that. We all have an imaginary world within us, some idea of what would have happened if you did things differently. It's like the strange feeling you get when you do something for the first time, but it feels like you've done it before. Everyone has a memory of an imaginary world in their mind, but the memory is not always that clear. It's not surprising, really. You are special enough to be able to see those fragments of memory. It's probably very difficult for you to understand how special you really are. You were born into a world where it's a natural thing for you to see these fragments. I was originally born in the normal world. I didn't know until recently that I could collect these fragments of memory. You grabbed those fragments just because you could, but I didn't know how to do that for a long time. I'm sorry. I'm sure you're not interested in hearing my story. Huh? What's wrong? What are you curious about? Oh? You're curious as to why so many different incidents occur in the same world? <laughs> it's very interesting, isn't it? Why do you think that's the case? Let's think about it together. Thinking is the first step towards playing a game. The main character among Riku's group of friends is Keiichi Maira. In Oikakushi, he was possessed by suspicion and killed Rena Ryugu and Mion Sonozaki. If that was an inevitable event, he would be killing them in every world. In other words, what Keiichi Maira did in Oikakushi was not inevitable. Indeed, the only thing that's inevitable is Keiichi Maira's role. If Keiichi Maibara was someone with a naturally suspicious heart, he would take the same actions in every world. But that didn't happen. It's true that Keiichi Maibara is both passionate and easily convinced of anything, but it's rare for him to exhibit the kind of rage he displayed in Onikakushi. In other words, even though something might seem inevitable in one world, that may not be the case if you compare it to a different one. If something really isn't inevitable, it will happen for sure in every life. That's what true inevitability is like. It's very important that you know that. When you compare the different worlds, what's common among all of them is the truth. Understand? Like I said, what seems inevitable in one life could just be a random event in another. The club activities that Mion Sonozaki suggests are a good example. If Mihon Sonozaki had a strong inclination towards playing certain games, you would be playing them in every world. But in reality, you participate in different activities in most of them. That means the games they play in the club are randomly decided by Mihon Sonozaki. We know that now because we've been through many different lives. Those who only live in one world can't see if the event in question is inevitable or random. Those who only live once can't predict what's going on in Sonoz Mion Sonozaki's mind, but we can. Although the activities are random, Mion Sonozaki calls us together for the club meeting almost every day in every life. I can see that Mion Sonozaki holds a strong will towards having the club meeting. Mion Sonozaki always wants to play with the other club members, but she doesn't know what to play. See? We can read Mion Sonozaki's mind just by simply examining these fragments. With this alone, we can see part of who Mion Sonozaki really is. Let me talk a bit more about Keiichi Maiba. For those who only live once, the world of the Onikakushi chapter is nothing but a story where Keiichi suffered mysterious hallucinations and beat his friends to death. For them, there's nothing beyond that fact. We, however, can compare different fragments and find out something they could never see. As a result, we know that the murder of his friends was not inevitable. I told you that just earlier. In fact, while there are about five or six pieces in front of you, he only kills his friends in one of them. That means we can roughly conclude 
that the possibility of Keiichi Maribo triggers the tragedy is less than 20%, and is almost a fluke. This means that amongst the countless worlds, Keiichi Maribo causing the tragedy is an unimportant factor. Now, can you find the common thread to be drawn from here? My, you found it already? No wonder you were born in this world. Probably talking about how no one specifically triggers the tragedy, so it's none of them. You're quick to learn the knack for playing with building blocks. I didn't figure that out for a while, unless she was talking about the Watanagashi Knight. I was born in the normal world, so I could only see things from a single world's perspective. I was too obsessed with the fact that Keiichi Mara caused the tragedy, so I had trouble finding it. Right. That's exactly right. You see it? Onikakushi, Watanagashi, Meikashi, and Sumi Horobushi chapters all have something in common. Let me look at these. Watanagashi, Meikashi, Sumi Horobushi. Those are all but not Satgos. And obviously the Rika one is too short and not part of it. Let's see what it says. Someone in the group becomes violent because of dark and paranoid thoughts. Okay. In each world, either Keiichi Maibara, Shion Sonazaki, or Rena Ryugu became violent as their delusions grew stronger. Keiichi Maibara, Shion Sonazaki, and Rena Ryugu are all my close friends, but they were all born and raised differently. The only common factor is that they all live in Hinomizawa. I just said it not too long ago, though. When we peer through these fragments of multiple worlds, the constant phenomena became our facts, and the chance phenomena hold a little meaning. In other words, the unrelated individual culprits are not all that important. To go further, the violence of their crimes also bears no meaning. Keiichi Maibara beat his friends to death. Shion Sonazaki killed the central people of the three families. And Rena Ryugu took over the school. They were all different. There's nothing in common there. In fact, the very, very important truth is that while the culprit and crimes are decided at random, their process of growing paranoid until they resort to violence is always constant. The suspect changes every time, but the process does not. After comparing the different worlds, this is the truth I found. This is one truth that is common to all the worlds of Hinomizawa. The rule is that a random person becomes violent under the influence of paranoid thoughts. This is Rule X. Keiichi Maiba, Shion Sonazaki, and Renu Ryugu, pieces with no particular connection, have the potential to succumb to that rule with random probability. I don't know what the probability is that those pieces will be ensnared by that rule. Perhaps there is some rule to that too. It's because these three are all close in age? Or is it because they all live in Hinomizawa? Well, we're not detectives or police officers. This is not something that a small girl like us, Rika Furude, can easily figure out. At least we now know that there is a mysterious rule in the world of Hinomizawa. People who only live in one world have no way of knowing that. I'm proud of myself for figuring that out. I guess for you it's not particularly surprising, though. Huh? What did you say? That's right. If something is common among all the worlds, that means it's fated to happen. <laughs> Some events quickly come to mind, don't they? Yep, those two. Jiro Tomotake and Mio Ta Takano are always killed in those worlds. On top of that, they are murdered in exactly the same way in every world. In other words, unlike our previous rule with its variability, their murders are thoroughly planned out by someone with a strong will. So that does not fit with the mysterious, vague of Rule X that leads to a random individual to violence. After all, they are always murdered, regardless of who falls to Rule X. Therefore, there's another rule to these worlds, a rule that says Jiro Tomitake and Mio Takano will get killed on the night of Wat Watanashi. Let's call it Rule Y. That means there will be a Rule Z. <laughs> Don't you see how funny this is? Jiro Tomitake and Mio Takano are killed in every world, right? Every time, the character who gets cursed always thinks that their deaths have something to do with the danger that's awaiting them. The fact that someone turns violent, Rule X, and Jiro Tomitake and Mio Takano's deaths, Rule Y, are supposed to be two independent rules, but they all tend to link them together. 
Of course, one could say that's how they become ensnared in the spell of paranoia leading them to violence to begin with. But do you think, in their paranoia, that they notice someone is trying to lead them to link those rules together? Yes. Whoever the piece leading them is, they are the ones making the stage called Hinamizo a very complicated. You should have noticed at least two suspicious people. Do you know who I'm talking about? Oishi and... Mio Takano herself, I think. That's right. Yep. I'm referring to Kurado Oishi and Mio Takano. When you compare our previous fragments, the role of pe the piece known as Kurado Oishi becomes clear. He's a detective who is retiring this year, and he's in a hurry to solve the mysteries of, seri of the series of deaths in Hinamizawa. After he retires, he'll have to move away from the village. That's why he's desperate to solve this case before he has to leave Hinamizawa. Why is he so obsessed with the serial murders in Hinamizawa? That's right. It's because of the first murder involving the manager of the construction site, his friend. The victim was Oishi's close friend. You will see that if you look at the Himatsubushi chapter, chapter 4. Oishi was there when the damn conflict was at its peak. He saw how the Sonozaki family took control of the Onifuchi Guardians, and he believed that the Sonozaki family was pulling the strings behind the whole incident. That's why he always suspected that the Sonozaki family was behind the series of mysterious deaths, regardless of the evidence, or lack thereof. His personal, biased belief, combined with his credibility as a police detective, affected the pitiable victims of persecution complexes in each world. As a result, the pitiful victims of Rule X come to accept the Sonozaki family as the identity of the unknown force their paranoia seeks. Shion Sonozaki's case was the most conspicuous one in that matter. So yes, if this piece Oishi didn't intervene, then perhaps the victims of Rule X wouldn't have resorted to such violence. So the role his piece plays is to indirectly cause the tragedy. I don't know who named him this. Oyashiro-sama's servant is the perfect nickname for Oishi. <laughs> the other suspicious person is Mio Takano. One would assume the only role of her piece is to amuse herself with research into Onikufuchi's dreaded history, and to take pleasure in scaring others with these tales. However, just like Oishi, she also gives them the idea that the Sonozaki family is behind all the mysterious incidents that happen in the village. She interfered the most with Rena Ryugu. For Mio Takano, Ren and Ryugu was the perfect prey, grasping at straws to try and identify the source force she suspected. Ironically, however, Mio Takano always ends up getting killed at the end. If she had survived and seen Rena take over the school, she would have laughed long and loud. Now, have you realized that these two pieces and the roles they fulfill have their own role too? They talk about the Sonozaki family, and the listeners always believe them. This is Rule Z, and what a humorous rule it is. You should already have an answer to this mystery in your fragments on hand. The fact is that the Sonozaki family always acts as if they are responsible, no matter if they are or not. They always pretend to be the villains in order to make sure that people continue to fear them. As a result, the villagers have believed that the Sonozaki family has been pulling the strings ever since the damn conflict ended. Kurado Oishi and Mio Takuma were simply fooled by that rule. Actually, the whole village is fooled by it. Still, the more I think about it, the stranger the series of mysterious deaths in Hinamizu has seemed to be, seems to me. <laughs> Do you know why? Nearly all of the fragments of memories we have here are from 1983, so I have no idea about the incidents from 1980 to 82. But it's likely that interpreting these murders as serial is simply a result of falling victim to Rule Z, believing that the Sonozaki family is pulling the strings behind everything. In short, they may be trying to conflate those multiple crimes, which each happened for different reasons, into one big case. Well, I have no way of discerning the truth from those fragments here. Still, perhaps something lies in one of them. Each case was supposed to have been solved individually, after all. We don't know if that theory is sound or irrational, but it might be surprisingly an element we can't ignore. That reminds me, Shion said something intriguing in the Mayakashi chapter. That curse system she came up with. Do you remember that? 
Her theory was that the villagers believe that they are allowed to kill an enemy of the village on the night of Watanagashi, in the name of Oyashiro-sama's curse, and that this foundation of murder is allowed on that night alone is the true identity of the curse. Since most of the fragments here are from 1983, there's nothing to back the val validity of Shion's theory, but there are still interesting things about it. In other words, her theory is that the suspect is not the one who's committing the crime. It's the environment that's causing the murder. Perhaps in a single world, people in a single world tend to analyze a criminal's life to determine the process that led them to crime, but her idea is different. The real crime is committed not by the criminals, but by the environment. In other words, it may only be happenstance that Robert A committed the crime, and the environment of poverty may have created Robert B instead, or perhaps even Robert C. A may, A may not even be a criminal in another world. Therefore, the real criminal is not A, but the environment that creates A, B, or C. And well, while people are in a single world may be able to reach such an idea, the widespread desire to place blame commonly causes A to be lynched by society, while the environment that gave rise to A goes ignored. Did I confuse you? I'm sorry. Perhaps that example was actually harder to understand for you. It's easy for me to see it like that because I'm from the normal world. Let me make it simple for you. The culprit behind the tragedy in many worlds isn't individuals like Keiji Maibo or Shion Zonazaki, but the environment. So, Rule X is the true culprit at fault. You're earning good marks if you can grasp that, even if we don't know the identity of Rule X. And if you can grasp the three rules governing the stage called Hinomizawa, Rules X, Y, and Z, then you're earning very good marks. As long as you understand those rules, then even if this is your first experience world, you should easily find the truth without distraction. See? Isn't it fun? Merely three simple rules are interacting on this stage, creating a kaleidoscope of different worlds. This is probably a very unusual case. In other locations, you shouldn't be able to see such extreme variation, even after looping through several worlds. It keeps me entertained just staying here and watching these worlds evolve. Anyway, there's one more fact we can understand from these fragments of worlds. This is the biggest problem we Rico Fruides are facing. The fact that Rico Fruides always dies each time. It's as if June 1983 is a dead end for her. Worse, there's no random randomness to it. It's guaranteed to happen. In other words, it's the same pattern as the deaths of Jiro Tomotake and Mio Takuma, except she's died different ways compared to those two. So, it's not inevitable. It's following the exact same rule, Rule Y. Tomitake Jiro and Takuma Mio are always murdered on the night of Watanagashi. Furuderika's date of death is not always the same, but she's always dead by the middle of June. Jiro Tomitake and Mio Takuma are probably attacked on their way home, so that's why it always happens on the same night. But for Rika Fruide, it's different. She takes different actions in every world, and her lifestyle is very unpredictable. For that reason, the day of her death is not always the same. However, she always dies in June, because a similar powerful conviction vows to kill her too. So can we assume that the same rule why killing them is also the rule behind her death? Is the same person killing all three of them? I don't know if it's the same person, but it's highly likely the same rule is at work. Is it the same person? Or the same organization? Is it the same views? The same goals? Rika's most important goal is to escape her deadly fate, but it doesn't mean that she just wants to leave the village and survive. She wants to live happily in the village. All of her friends must also be happy too. That's Rika's happy future. The ideal future she hopes for. It's tragic that we can't realize such a simple desire no matter how many times we repeat this. Though, it's a tragedy we're only able to perceive, because we're beings ca capable of comparing the fragments from different worlds. By the way, I have some interesting information. While Rika is almost always killed by Rule Y, have you noticed that she's killed by Rule X in some worlds? Right, it happened in the Watanagashi and the Meikashi chapters. Rika Furude committed suicide, but you can say she was more or less killed by Rule X via so Shion Somozaki in those worlds. In other words, this is a blunder for Rule Y. 
Rule Y is trying to kill Rika with a strong desire to achieve some aim. But she was killed before that, as a result of the unrelated Rule X. That might have caused them to show some disturbance. If Rule Y's objective is simply to bury Rika, then that's not a problem. But if they have some objective beyond that, then that might show up as some other pheno phenomenon. Perhaps the Watanagashi and Meikashi chapters have something in common. Something that doesn't happen in the other worlds. Unfortunately, we're Rika Furude, so we don't know what happens after Rika is dead. Or, by any chance, do you know what happened? Since I'm Rika Furude, I only know of events during Rika's life. You, on the other hand, are a special existence who was born in a superior world. Is there anything that didn't happen in the Watanakshi and Meikashi chapters? That happened in all the other worlds after Rika's death? Um... But it didn't happen in one either, I believe. In only Kakshi, I believe. But it was talking about how the um, Great Disaster happened in 3 and 6, I believe? But I mean, Rika's death didn't happen in one. Now that I think about it, so... Rika's death triggers... The Great Disaster is what this is saying right now. The memories I have here are all mainly about the chaos brought about by Rika's friends, that is, Rule X. But its foundation, Rule Z, and the obvious hostility common among all rule worlds, Rule Y, are what I believe to be the true rules governing this stage. If so, then Rika's path is a thorny one. She needs to fight Rule Y in order to survive. Unless she defeats it, she has no future past June 1983, and to win her own happiness, she must also beat Rule X to win her friend's safety. So long as that's undefeated, one of Rika's precious friends may le be led to tragedy. If that happens, then even should Rika survive, she wouldn't have the future happy future she hopes for. She also may have to defeat Rule Z, just as Shio Sonozaki Shion, huh, they switched her name there, face it in Meikashi. So long as Rule Z remains, then even if she escapes 1983, it's possible another tragedy may lay, lie waiting in 1984, Rule Z being the Sonozaki tragedy thing. It's extremely likely that Rule Z is the breeding ground for Rule X. Hinamizawa's fundamental belief that the Sonozaki family is behind everything, and the custom that anything can be misconstrued as a curse, may indirectly be the root of all evil here. People are not surprised to see somebody die on the night of Watsunagashi. That type of thinking is keeping the curse alive in Hinomizawa, where it causes even more tragedy. It's Rule Z reinforcing itself. Rule X, Y, and Z. There are three rules that hunt Rika down in the eternal June of 1983. They are all tough obstacles. We didn't even figure out these three common rules until recently. Were you aware of them? If you were, I'll give you straight A's. I've tried so hard in the past to break these rules, but I was never successful. However, a miracle happened in the Sumi Horiboshi chapter. Keiichi Maibara was able to recognize a small fragment from another world by chance, and he beat Rule X. In the end, Rika was still killed that night by Rule Y, though. But still, one rule was defeated. That was a huge leap forward. Rika knew there were three common rules among the worlds, but she could never break any of them. Eventually, she gave up and lost interest in the worlds. That's how I was born. However, she's different now. She learned something valuable from Keiichi Maibara. That the rules can be broken with a strong enough will to fight. If she can break all three rules, Rika Furude will be freed from her eternal prison. She doesn't have much time left, though. Rika has traveled through many worlds. Her physical lifespan is not a problem, but her mental lifespan is getting shorter. Mentally, she is extremely old, and her soul is starting to turn into something different. In the end, she'll probably lose the ability to experience singular worlds. She's already showing those signs, and eventually, her memories from the parallel worlds will mix together, ultimately causing her derangement and the loss of Rika Furude's soul. Then, she will disappear. That means that you and I are going to be left in this dark world. The fragments of our memories will gradually disappear, and we will be left alone in the eternal darkness. Eventually, we will die. Rika Furude is aware of that. 
she knows that her mental lifespan is getting shorter and shorter. Han Yu is also losing her powers. She can't rewind through years of time like she used to. Her power has decreased so much that she can barely rewind one month of time. Actually, she can only rewind a few weeks. In the next world, she should only have about two weeks of time. Rika Furude is going to try to break all three rules in just those two weeks. I want to know what, what's outside the well, so I tried to claw my way up from there. I want to know what's outside the well, so I continued to climb even when I fell and injured myself. I finally realized the higher I climb, the more pain I feel when I fall. When my curiosity toward the world and my physical pain become equal, I finally understood the meaning of the frog in the well. Frederico von Castle. Chapter 7. Minagoshi. Sorry, it's like. I assume that won't be a chapter, but just the opening before the chapter. Yep. I felt no gravity in the darkness and lost all my senses as a result. I banged my head on the floor with a dull thud. Seeing stars behind my eyelids, I curled into a ball while holding my head in pain. Are you okay? Did you get hurt? Rika! Please say something. I had no idea why I was in this situation, but as soon as I heard their voices from the top of the cliff, I realized that I must have fallen. Ah, I remember. I was playing behind the shrine with the rest of the club members. I got too excited and started doing something very dangerous. Then the tree branch broke. That's how I fell off the cliff. My body started to ache all over. I remembered how I fell, but I still felt strange for some reason. I couldn't remember what I was doing. No, it was more that I couldn't remember who Rika Frude was before I fell off the cliff. Ow, 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 ow. I heard Hanyu's panicked voice. I looked behind me and saw Hanyu standing there with a scared look on her face. Hanyu, just a second. Sorry about that, had to remove the cap. And as usual, we need to do the original. <laughs> Another good one, though. Her hands are hidden in the original. Ouch. What just happened? Oh, well, you were playing with everyone and fell off the cliff. But are you okay? I don't care about that, Hanyu. What day is it today? What year and what month is it? I always ask this question first when something like this happens. She finally realized that I was asking the same old question. Um, it's June of 1983. The Watanagashi Festival is next week, so... Oh dear, I only have that much time left? This is the best we can do, Hanyu muttered regretfully. It was the middle of June, 1983. If this really was the best she could do, I had no choice. I couldn't complain. I gradually started to remember more things. If this is June of 1983, I see. I was killed again. After Rena surrendered to the police, all of the classmates were given checkups at the clinic. I didn't get hurt, so I was sent back home after they determined that I had no injuries. My memory started getting vague from that point on. A common characteristic of my violent deaths. When my life is taken away violently, the memory before death becomes vague with static. It's like a violently ripped roll of toilet paper. That example should make it easy to understand, even if it's uncouth. That's why I have no clear memory of what happened and how I died that night. I only have vague memories. I think someone covered my mouth with a handkerchief or something, and I passed out. 
That's about the only thing that I remember, and only vaguely. I'm not even sure if it really happened. The only thing I know for sure is that I was attacked on my way home, or possibly after I got there, and that I was murdered suddenly. I don't know who killed me, or how I was killed. I'm glad that at least I don't remember the horrific ending to my life every time it happens. Because of my experiences, I think I now understand why ghosts wander around this world, not knowing that they died so suddenly. If it's a death from a long-lasting illness, people tend to remember that they were sick. They can kind of assume that they died after being sick for a long time. But when your memory is violently disrupted like mine, it can get quite confusing. When I first experienced this, I wasn't sure if I was dreaming or not. I even thought that I hit my head hard and lost my memory. I needed to organize things before I got, get too confused. My name is Rika Furude. People look at me in a special way, but that's not a big deal for me. All I want is a happy life where I can play around with my best friends. I can't remember how long I've been living just for the sake of obtaining that simple happiness. This panicked girl here is named Hanyu. I'm the only one who can see her. Perhaps she only exists inside of my head? At any rate, Hanyu is invisible and can generally only interact with me. It'll be a long story if I try to explain Hanyu's existence, so I won't be doing that right now. Besides, I don't even know how I should talk about her. She's been there since I was born, and her existence is a natural thing for me. I saw everyone running up the gravel road toward me. They're my important and lovable best friends. Our group's active, boisterous, and we get serious about doing stupid things. I'm never bored when I'm around them, and I love them very much. Oh, Rikachan, are you okay? Did you sprain your ankle? Where did you get hurt? Let this old man have a look at that. Me, thank you so much. I just got a bump on my head. I think all I got was a bump at least. My injury wasn't as serious as everyone thought. When you hit your head, you still need to be cautious, even if you're fine for the moment. Th that's true. You should get the coach to check you out just in case. That is a good idea. Do you want me to go and get him? Yeah. We'll go ask somebody to use a phone and call him here. You don't need to do that. I'm totally fine. Nipa. Absolutely not, Rika. You must be cautious. Satsuko warned me with a stern voice. It really wasn't a big deal, but I decided to nod since Satsuko was trying to be generous. She wasn't trying to boss me around or anything. She was only saying that because of how much she cares. I've seen it before in the many different lives that I've been through. I have no doubt that she's really concerned about me. It's not just Satsuko. Mion, Rena, and Keiichi are the same. They're all so nice to me and they truly do care. Mion left to look for her phone. Rena also left with a towel, looking for the water tap. Satsuko remained nearby, taking care of me with a worried face, and Hanyu was just standing there, still wearing a panicked look. Keiichi seemed to put you panicked too, but he was trying not to show it. He was standing by me, wearing a calm expression. Are you alright? I'm fine. It doesn't hurt anywhere. I'm glad you're not seriously injured. I was super worried. I wouldn't feel anything special about his words if this was a while ago. But at that moment, when Rena took over the classroom, when she hurt Mion, Cage tried his best to save Rena, even so. He was more reliable than I ever imagined from his normal behavior. He's usually an insensitive guy who hurts other people's feelings without noticing, but that's not his true self. He has a secret side. He's willing to sacrifice himself for other people. I was just observing that not too long ago. That's why I can honestly feel his generosity now. Now that I think about it, Keiji regained a memory from another world the previous time around. Is it possible that he carries that memory in this world too? If that's the case, I have some hope. Hanyu and I are totally powerless. Hanyu is only like heir to everyone but me, and I'm just a little girl. There's only so much that we can do to, our, to ourselves. But Keiichi is different. He changed the fate that I had once resigned myself to. He's somebody who may have the power to take me to my unseen future. If I can get Keiichi to understand me, 
He could be my hero. Perhaps I'm actually not expecting that much out of him. I just want someone to understand my struggle of being stuck in this maze. Keiichi? I spoke to him slowly. It had been a while since I felt so nervous. I hadn't felt this way since I started my endless life in 1983. As a witch, I normally would know what his response would be before even talking to him. I often remain silent because I already know how pitiful the reply would be. But in that case, why was I so nervous now? Huh? Did you call me, Rikachan? Hanyu gave me a disappointed look before I responded to Keiichi. Rika, I could tell what Hanyu was thinking too. The miracle wasn't going to happen. If miracles do happen, one could have happened many times in my other lives. But I've only seen one miracle before. The miracle that Keiji gave me was a once-in-a-lifetime kind of miracle. Only if it happened again would it be a true miracle. I won't get out of this world just because I rolled six on the die once. I can't get out unless I get a miracle that's equivalent to getting six on the die ten times in a row. And so, I rolled ten dice wishing that they'd all turn out to be six. Keiji? What is it? Are you hurt anywhere? He looked at me worriedly after I called his name twice. Keiichi, do you remember? I knew how sudden my question was. As I thought he would, he looked at me with a confused face. Huh? What are you talking about? I looked inside his eyes to see his true feelings. He should remember. He should know. Even though he doesn't have the memory, Keiichi experienced it. What is she referring to, Keiichi-san? Did you do something bad to her? You had better speak up. Keiichi, do you remember climbing up on the school roof? The school roof? Keiichi-san, you climbed up there? I'm not asking you, Satsuko. Do you remember, Keiichi? I did. I climbed up on the roof? When? You must be mistaken somehow, Rikuchan. I never climbed on the roof, and I don't even know how to get up there. Of course you haven't experienced it in this world yet. But please tell me that you remember. I know you've never been up on the roof, but you should still remember doing it. You should be able to remember it, true, but you actually did once. You should be able to remember it once again. Perhaps you went up there to get a ball or something? Never. Have you been up there, Satsuko? Unthinkable. I would get in such terrible trouble if I did something like that. By bed, it'd feel really good to take a nap up there. <laughs> There's no way he would remember. Yeah. <laughs> if miracles could happen that easily, neither of us would be suffering like this. Shut up. I knew that. I knew that he wouldn't remember. Our fate is already set in stone. We're like a pitiful cicada that dies after the summer festival. Shut up. Owl. As I stared at her fiercely, Hanyu realized that she had crossed the line. This might be a waste of time. The maze we're in might not have an exit. It might be an endless loop without a goal in place. We are trapped in this fate. I thought that Keiichi might be able to get me out of here. But that Keiichi I saw was truly a miracle, a momentary glimmer. The Keiichi of this world doesn't bear that same miracle. The Keiichi of the previous world required Rena being insane from the Rule X to realize Rule X existed. All the same, I'm not going to give up. Last time too, I gave up on fighting destiny. I realized Rena was beyond salvation, so I bid her farewell and forsook that world. But Keiichi fought and broke the cycle of fate. I should have worked harder with that Keiichi in that world. I could have broken this endless cycle together with him. Am I going to repeat this life, waiting for that miracle to happen again? I can't do that. I don't want to repeat the same life anymore. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of this world, my fate, and everything. I'm tired of getting murdered by destiny. Keiji showed me a miracle. I should be able to do the same too. I must fight. 
I must fight with all my remaining power. I was always fighting. I was fighting when I had more power. But I never made it. How can I expect to win this time? Still, I must fight. Keiichi taught me that fate can be shattered. I'm going to fight one more time. To my granddaughter. Is that Rika? <laughs> Let's do this one more time. I'm sorry for leaving you like this. I just need you to understand I'd rather take my own life than be fearful of how many days I have left to live. What? That's why I'm writing this letter to you. I can't stand the fear of being unable to leave behind a will while my life is prolonged, even as I lose my consciousness. In the end, there's nothing I can leave behind for you. I was unable to leave any of my achievements to this world. I was forgotten before I was dead. I leave this world a humiliated man, knowing that I had no appreciation from anyone. You must do better than me. You must achieve something that your grandfather was never able to achieve. I don't mind what field you choose. You must leave your mark on this world. You must leave behind your achievements. You will eventually die someday. You will eventually turn to ashes. As a human being, that's your inevitable fate. But if you achieve a great success, you will live forever, even after you depart. Those who live beyond their deaths are called gods. I wish to become one. I was unable to do so. So in my place, you must become a god someday. Now I curse you to become a god. <laughs> Doesn't tell you whose grandfather that is, so it leaves it vague. Oh, we're at the clinic now. Yes. There. You're all done. Eri withdrew the noodle from Satsuko's arm. It must not have hurt much for the needle to be pulled out. Satsuko kept her eyes closed in fear, thinking that the needle was still inside her arm. Satsuko, you're all done, you know. What? Uh, oh, it's finally over? As Satsuko opened her eyes, she found that Eri was no longer sitting in front of her. Takuna was wiping her arm with rubbing alcohol instead. That's right. You're all done now. I think that's the first time you see Takuma in her nurse outfit. <laughs> Look at how sad Sasuko is. <laughs> Dr. Eri is good with needles, unlike me. You didn't even notice he was finished. Don't touch that part of your arm for a while, okay? Also, try not to carry anything heavy. Of course, I know that by now. Good for you, Satsuko. I'll pat your head for you. It was nothing. There's nothing I did that would require you to pat my head. Not long ago, she would go into a panic when it was time for her to get her shot. The way she behaved today in itself is worthy of praise. Everyone in the room smiled, aware of that growth. Please give her the usual test, will you, Takuma san? Sure. All right, Satsuko-chan, it's time for the quiz we always do. Your quiz is always quite difficult for me. Take it easy. If it's too difficult, you can just tell me that you don't know the answer. You don't have to think too hard. Just tell me whatever comes to mind at the moment. Takuma smiled at Satsuko to ease her attention. Then she led Satsuko to a desk in the back of the examination room. I hope... Satsuko gets better soon. I don't know if it's because of the heat, but Satsuko has been showing negative symptoms since last month. The change of the seasons can affect her physically and emotionally. It's not a surprise that this ha is happening to her. I'm going to see Iri and ask him how Satsuko is doing. What are you going to do, Hanyu? I'm going to stay with Satsuko. Thank you. I'll leave it to you. Hanyu went over to where Satsuko was. Fortunately, I'm the only one who can see Hanyu. She won't be a distraction if she goes and observes Satsuko's test. I, of course, would be a distraction like that. This is supposed to be a routine exam, 
but it seems like Takano is teasing her by giving her difficult questions. It would be pretty funny to observe how Satoko reacts to them. I'm a little jealous that Hanyu gets to watch everything without being a bother to Satoko. <laughs> Iria was talking with two other staff members about Satsuko's exam results. I walked up and joined them. Thank goodness. She seems to be improving. From what Iria was saying, her results must have turned out well. Iria, how is she? Don't worry. The results were good. I'll discuss this more with you two later. After ordering his staff to continue their work, Iria showed me some difficult paperwork and started explaining it to me. I guess we overreacted to the test results from last week. Her condition shifted dramatically because of the change in climate. Did she have a cold by any chance? There was one night recently that was fairly hot. Satko was sleeping without her blanket, and her stomach was exposed. She might have caught a cold that night. The Japanese cold. <laughs> she was sleeping with her belly exposed. I poked her belly button, but she didn't wake up at all. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Please call me if that happens again. I would love to poke Sakuko-chan's belly button, too. It's so soft. Her belly is chunky, too. It was so cute that I didn't want to cover it with a blanket. <laughs> That's why she caught a cold, huh? Rika, I can hear you. You had better put a blanket on me next time. You're in the middle of a quiz, Sakuko-chan. You need to concentrate. Irie, Hanyu, and I all left. Satko went back to her test with a bitter look on her face. Arie began speaking to me in a softer voice. She's in remission, but her level is at still L3 negative. She was and will continue to be in a critical condition. Now what is this L3 negative? We ask. She's never ever going to get better? Just like with anaphylaxis, her body will be conditioned to react severely even after the foreign chemical is out of her system. In other words, she'll never move below the level 3 stage. Yes, that's right. But it's not the end of the world. She can control it by maintaining a proper lifestyle, as well as taking some medication. But it'll never be cured in her whole lifetime. I looked at Satsuko as she enjoyed taking her test. Little emotions. She seemed to be having fun, even while being teased by Takano. I can't believe that she's suffering from an incurable disease. If you think of it in a negative way, you're right. But many people in the world are coping with incurable illnesses. Diabetes is a good example. The condition itself can never be cured, but the symptoms can be controlled. I know that very well. There are many worse diseases in the world. Satko might be in a relatively good situation compared to many other sick people. Of course, I'm not giving up on her. I'll make sure that I cure her disease someday. I promise. I trust you. Yes, trust me. Ari spoke to me with a serious look on his face. As Satko's best friend, I felt relieved to hear his words. I'm sure he'll do his best to save Satko's life. I have no doubt that he'll do so. I've seen him act like this in every life I've lived. I also know why he's so passionate to save her, but I'm not supposed to know about it in this life. That's why I always pretend not to see his sad smile. By the way, Rikasan, we'll be conducting another big test at the end of the month. Am I going to be the guinea pig this time? It's not like that. You're only helping our studies, which will save many people's lives. Iri's guinea pig is not just Satoko. I'm also one of them. Although, guinea pig is probably not the right term. Without Iri's efforts, Satko would not be here today. For that reason, I should be showing respect to this man. I smiled at him, since my choice of words had hurt his feelings. Me? If testing me can save Satko's life, I don't mind being a guinea pig. Thank you for your support. I wouldn't be causing you so much trouble if I had more money and equipment. The next moment, the phone rang. Irie answered it in his usual business-like tone. Hello, this is Irie. You have a call on the line from Tokyo. I'll transfer it to the other phone. I could hear the voice from the phone. Ah, that must be Risa-san, then. 
Is it that time of the year already? I'm going to pick it up at the office. Will you transfer it there? Absolutely. Please hang up on this line in that case. Okay. I'm sorry, Rikasan. I got a call from Tokyo. Don't mind me. As soon as Iri hung up the phone, the phone in the other room started ringing. He left the examination room and headed toward the office. Hanyu returned to my side as soon as Irie left. Hanyu doesn't like to be around me when I'm talking with Irie. I don't think she dislikes him. It's just that she doesn't really want to hear what he has to say. Irie doesn't mean any harm, but Hanyu is often hurt by the things that come out of his mouth. How's Satsuko doing? She's not good at spot the difference, like usual. I was able to find more differences than her. I don't care how well you did. What about Satsuko? Oh, whoa, whoa. I thought she was there to check on Satsuko, but she was taking the quiz alongside her instead. That's so typical of Hanyu. She was treating it almost like a game, but Satsuko was tired after taking the same quiz every week. She seemed sleepy, especially after waking up so early this morning. The quiz in this case wasn't about a right or wrong answer. It was about timing, in minutes, how long it took her to answer the question, and observing how she acted during the quiz. Not all of the questions would be simple ones, so Satsuko often got headaches, more so than in even the spelling test we take at school. Is it almost over? Yes, it is. The book Takano has right now is the last one. Takano was showing a book to Satsuko with the abstract pictures inside. I couldn't even tell if that was supposed to be a picture. It was just a symmetrical, symmetrical ink stain. This is the last one. What do you think this is? Both Hanyu and I looked at the picture over Satsuko's shoulders. Even I didn't know what to answer when looking at that strange ink stain. <laughs> um, um. Satsuko continued to think. Takano observed her, taking notes while Satsuko struggled. She was also timing how long it took her to answer, holding a stopwatch under the table. I spoke to Hanyu so only she could hear me. What do you think it looks like, Hanyu? Oh, well, oh. It's soft serve ice cream. It fell onto the ground and ended up like this. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. it's been wasted. I see. This is a good test for understanding a person's mind. <laughs> to me, it looked like a horse mackerel that had been cut open and its guts pulled out. I was thinking of food, too. It was rather shocking to learn that my thought processes are the same as Hanya's. Is that a... that close to food? I mean, I guess, but it's a bit darker. <laughs> What does it look like to you? You don't have to think too hard. Satsuko must not be very good at this test. She always takes a long time to answer questions like this. She finally opened her mouth to speak. It's like two butterflies are on top of each other. Two butterflies on top of each other? Tell me more about it. Why are they on top of each other? Takano continued to take notes as Satsuko spoke. Curious about what she was writing. I looked at, but I looked, but is that German? <laughs> I can't read it at all. Takuma is so mean. Um, they were apart for quite some time, but having finally reunited, they're excited to see each other again. <laughs> I apologize. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. No, you're doing just fine. You can just tell me whatever's on your mind. That's the whole point of this test. Are you certain even such a strange answer is serving a purpose? Of course. For example, take this picture. You gave me a totally different answer last year. I can tell how much you've changed just by comparing how you respond. Really? I don't like this test. What did I even say last year? Takuma smiled and took a note without answering her question. I tried to remember what her answer was, but I have more than a hundred years worth of memories in my head. Hanyu might remember better than I do. As I looked at Hanyu, I realized that she was standing there with a sad expression. 
I decided not to ask her. I could tell what kind of answer Satsuko gave back then just by looking at Hanyu's face. Last year. June 1982. That was when Satsuko was being abused by her cruel aunt. Recalling that, I didn't even want to know what Satsuko answered. But just a year later, the Satsuko who was so worn down could no longer be seen. She became so strong. I know how difficult it was for her to stay tough and strong like this. Her growth over the past year is overwhelming to me. Are you done with the test? Eri returned from his office. Yes, we are finished. Satko-chan is handling it a lot better now. We were done pretty quick today. <laughs> I did my best to ensure it was done with quickly. I have plans after this, so I can't stay here too long. You have something after this? Today is Sunday, right? We're doing a club activity at Mii's uncle's toy store today. Just like chapter two. <laughs> no wonder you're so obedient with the test today. It was because you had plants. Sorry we held you so long. Well, here's your stuff, Satsuko chan. Eri put a big paper bag on the table. He opened it up and gave her instructions about the medications. Satsuko had heard the same instructions over and over before, but Eri still continued to talk just the same. Since you're doing better, you can go back to two shots per day. Please give yourself a shot before lunch and before you go to bed. Make sure you change the needle every time. Don't ever use the same one twice. I'm prescribing this one in case you really need it when you're feeling sick. Yeah, yeah, same as usual. I know. Satsuko couldn't wait to meet our friends for the club activity. It made me feel happy to see her as excited as this. She only has to take two shots per day now. I'm glad. The number of shots she has to take each day re represents how well she's doing. So it's a good thing that she has to take fewer shots. It's tough for her to give herself a shot two times a day. Hello? Honey grew quiet after hearing my comment. How many did she have to take before? Iri handed her the paper bag after he finished his instructions. Rika, at last it's over. Good job. You seemed anxious during the test today. Have fun with your friends. Uh, I'm sorry I was so tense. You have my thanks for all that you've done for me. <laughs> Are you going to make it on time? I can give you a ride there. Oh, I also bought a new stuffed animal. It's in my car. You can give it a name if you like. Oh my! What sort of creature could it be? I wonder why I should name it. Well, what is it exactly? <laughs> it's a cat again. One with tiger stripes this time. I think you'll like it a lot. Satsuko and Takano are good friends. They are both fond of stuffed animals. Every time Takano gets a new one, she brags about it to Satsuko. That's all they have in common, but... Having a friend like Takano is a special thing for Satsuko. She's part of the Hojo family, who tried to betray the village. People at the clinic are the only adults who will even talk to Satsuko. <laughs> Have fun at the club. You should suggest wearing maid uniforms for the punishment <laughs> game. I have every kind and every size. Either way, I'll see you next week. No, thank you. See you next week. Well, let's be going. Our battle today is not only against the club members. I'm itching to put my skills to the test. I bowed slightly and made to leave the examination room. But I soon realized something. Iria was looking at me with a sad expression on his face. Just with that look, I could tell what he wanted to say. Please take care of Satsuko-chan if something happens to her. I nodded at him and stepped out into the hallway with Satsuko. My goodness, I'm used to these tests and quizzes, but they always leave me exhausted. You don't like taking the tests? Well, I don't, but they are my job. There's nothing I can do about that. Satsuko is supporting Iria's research. She gets financial support by helping him out. Or at least, that's what Satsuko thinks she's doing. <laughs> They're lying to Satsuko. Satsuko is birthing, bursting <laughs> with enthusiasm, so we headed to Okonomiya at full speed. We wound up waiting for Keiji and the other club members for a long time. 
We got here early, but they were late. I think they were late the last time we did this, too. Did it mean that this was something that was meant to happen? It's unpleasant that I can't even change the most minor of fates. I finally saw them coming towards us on their bikes. Hello, everyone. How utterly slow all of you are. Sathko acted like she was upset, but I could tell that she was pleased to see them just the same. Oh, well, Sathko is so cute. That's why I'll never tire of her. <laughs> She's adorable. Sathko's behavior soothes my feelings of frustration. This is why I love Sathko. If she was a small, fluffy animal, I would definitely keep her in her cage. Good morning, Sathko-chan and Rika-chan. Good morning. Hey, good morning, Rika-chan. Sathko, think fast. we got to do this quick before the cops get here. Our goal is one billion yen. Oh, this one again? Huh? Cage san what in the world are you talking about? Are we late? When did you guys get here? It didn't take too long, so we've been waiting here a while. Mion and Renna knew that Satko gets a checkup every Sunday at the clinic. Sorry about that. Keichan didn't show up on time, so that's why we're late. That Keichi, so he's the reason they're always late. That's not really surprising. Nipa. <laughs> Wait a minute. Am I the bad guy here? Of course. Of all the club members, you're the only one who can play the villain. Oh, ho, ho. what's that supposed to mean? You better watch your mouth. Keichi and Satko messed around with each other. <laughs> Crying <laughs> Satko. <laughs> Satko acted like she was crying, and Rena punched Keiichi, knocking him out cold. It was the same old situation they always got into. I can watch this sort of thing forever. It's like having a glass of cold milk after taking a hot bath. Huh. huh. I can never win against her. You should get up and move before she cracks your front teeth. We all laughed at him and finished greeting each other. They're as lively as always. Nothing's more precious than one's health. You're sounding like an old lady, Rika. Shut up. Who cares what you think? I'm not going to eat any sweets if you keep on saying things like that. I, 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 I. Hanyu seemed to be getting more depressed than usual. I should stop teasing her so much. It was a joke. Will you get off me? I, 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 I. I'm sorry. I, 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 I. Hanyu loves sweet treats. She especially loves cake and ice cream. Since she can't eat anything, she has to depend on me when it comes to that. In other words, whatever I eat, Hanyu can taste too. Even if Hanyu craves something, it doesn't mean anything if I don't eat it. In other words, I have total control of what she eats. That's why it's fun to tease her with saying what I'll eat and what I won't. It's almost as fun as teasing Satsuko. Oh, you seem to be in a good day today, Rika-chan. I want to take you home. You'll be arrested if you do that, you know? Hey, Mion, the store owner is calling you. Rika, did you hear? There's to be a prize for the club activity today. I remember. Mion was going to be paying 50,000 yen out of her pocket as a prize. It's like over $500 back then. I couldn't believe she could just afford that. Therefore, I have to assume that she has some kind of guarantee that she won't lose. And do you know what it is? It's 50,000 yen. 50,000 yen! Satko stared at me. Oh no. She was expecting me to be surprised to hear that the prize was 50,000 yen. It's natural to be surprised after hearing that sum. But I didn't react because I already knew it. Perhaps I gave the impression that I have known it for a long time. Keiichi san, isn't it amazing that the prize is 50,000 yen? 50,000 yen? What the heck is that? That's like five years worth of the Keiichi GNP. <laughs> Satko said the same thing to Keiichi. She probably assumed that I wasn't listening to her. So she decided to talk to Keiichi instead. Oh well. That was just a small mistake. I'm fine. If I get 50,000 yen, I can get a lifetime supply of soy sauce. Wait, 
Why ever would you buy soy sauce with a prize like that? Because a certain someone always gives me a dirty look when I ask her to go and get some soy sauce from the store. Nipa! <laughs> You're so mean, Rika. How much soy sauce do you think you can even get for 50,000 yen? Man, I want to see. Keiji joined the conversation, which finally brought us back to our normal pace. In order to pursue a greater happiness, I need to sacrifice a smaller one. In a perfect world, Riku Furude was supposed to be surprised from her best friend that the prize was 50,000 yen. But I already knew that. I knew it from my previous lives, so all I could do was give her a boring reaction. I can't be surprised at the big prize of 50,000 yen. I can't give her the reaction that she expects from me. I'm losing the ability to be surprised by life. And after the continual repetition of small incidents like this, there will be nothing left that I can find interesting. I'll have nothing to be surprised about. I'll never be impressed with anything. Eventually, I'll lose my emotions entirely. That's why I'm always trying to be careful. I make sure I act like the Riku Furude who doesn't know anything. Even though I may not be impressed, as a young girl, Riku Furude should be impressed with many things. Riku Furude is supposed to act excited when she encounters something for the first time. I try to, at least. But the more and more I try, the more I feel like Riku Furude is someone very distant. distant. Rika, I'm sorry. I know I'm only wasting my lifespan by feeling depressed like this. I should enjoy this life. I don't mean my lifespan literally. I'm not referring to my physical lifespan, but my mental one. The more and more I repeat the same days, the more I lose, from wonder to passion, and eventually my life will become like an overplayed videotape. If I'm tired of that tape, I have a choice to close my eyes and sleep. By the time I wake up, the video should be over. But in reality, my life is not a beat-up old videotape. If I close my eyes and sleep, that would be my death. When my mental lifespan is over, Rika Frude will turn into a doll who can't even move a finger by her own will. When that happens, my pursuit of happiness will be over. I don't want that to happen. It's been at least a hundred years, if not more. I've been stuck in this living hell for so long. I don't want my life to end here. Sorry, I'm fine now. You must find it funny that I'm complaining about only a century. Oh, well, I've grown used to this fate by now. Huh. Alright. I'm fine. I'm Riku Furude. I'm Riku Furude. If I don't stay focused on being Riku Furude, I'm afraid I might end up showing my true self inside of that shell. Riku Furude is supposed to be a cute and innocent little girl, after all. Me. What would you buy if you got 50,000 yen, Rena? Um, I wonder if I can buy the Kentakun doll. Do you think they'll sell it to me if I give 50,000 yen to the fried chicken store? Oh, I think it would be easier for you to buy the tools and wearable to steal the doll. I bet Renaissance could break the chain with her bare hands if she wanted to. Wow, I agree on that one. Oh, you're all so mean. Thus we rejoin the typical flow of conversation naturally. Once I enter that flow, it's not hard for me to continue as Riku Fude. Being Riku Fude is like flying a kite for me. Once it's up in the air, it can stay in the sky for a while. But if something happens and it loses control, it's one heck of a challenge to get it back on track. Every time it tries to get back up in the air, the kite gets dragged on the ground and wears out. I'm exactly like that. Finally, Mion started clapping her hands to get everyone's attention. I already knew the rules. The members will be broken into five different groups, and each group plays a game that they choose together. I was secretly hoping that Mion would change the rules for some reason. There's nothing more boring than to already know what was going to happen. Mion can be very capricious. She really might change the rules. Yeah, but it seems like she's been playing this game for several days already. A strong will can be faded too, huh? Normally when we're doing club activities, Mion decides what to play at the last minute. She opens her locker and randomly decides what game to play. For that reason, our club activities are rarely repeated throughout my lives. That's why I'm never bored with them. But just as Han Yu said, today's event was something that Mion had been planning for a while. 
I was certain that she wouldn't suggest anything spontaneously today. In that case, this won't be up to random chance. Mion had only one idea in her mind. Therefore, it was equivalent to destiny. Although her idea of having this event in the toy store is actually a spontaneous one, in all the lives I've repeated, there's a very low chance for this event to occur. You shouldn't expect anything to be different. I'm not expecting it. Of course, I was lying just now. I was hoping that Mion would suggest a new rule for this game. If it was the same rules again, I'd be suffering for a few minutes while I listened to her instructions. Nothing is more frustrating than walking the same path over and over again. Please, Mion, please change my fate. Please. First, we're going to be divided into five different groups. The winner from each table... It was the same rules after all. Sorry, I was holding on to a small hope. Small hopes will hurt you, Rika. You're right. You've told me so many times, but I never learn. Honey has taught me ma so many times. She taught me the trick to swimming in the flow of destiny. The flow of destiny is just like a river's. By going with the flow, I can swim the direction I want to some extent. But of course, trying to swim against the flow requires great effort. Allowing myself to drift causes the least amount of strain. Of course, some strong currents are impossible to resist, even with great effort. If I recklessly try to resist without realizing it's impossible, then I'll only wear myself out needlessly, just as if fighting a reverse current. So Hanyu taught me to read those currents, which is why I should have easily imagined that the rules would be the same the moment I learned Ramilin had planned today's event in advance. Yeah, I still wish the rules would be different, a completely wasteful action. In the end, my hopes were betrayed, only leaving my heart worn out. And things like this, that caused me to separate further from Rika Furude. Eventually, I'll grow tired of everything, lose all interest, and die. A fate which can't be fought must be accepted. I know you can read the flow of destiny, Rika. You're right. My lifespan's already growing short. I should treasure what I have left. I sighed and pretended as though I was listening to Mion what Mion was explaining. What's wrong, Richan? Are you bored? Can't you surprise me all of a sudden? Are you talking to me? This had never happened before, so I thought he was talking to someone else. But it seemed like Keiichi really was talking to me. Yeah, you've looked bored ever since this morning. Are you sleepy from waking up too early? <laughs> I was just thinking that I've already done this before. No one would understand why I mean anyway, but Keiichi might. And so I told him how I honestly felt. Huh? Are you serious? No wonder Mion seems so used to this. I'm looking forward to it since it's my first time, though. I envied him for feeling that way. I sighed, knowing that I never will. I understand how frustrating it is to hear the same instructions over and over again. I went to criminal school once and studied ahead a lot there. I remember how much I hated hearing the same lectures in school. Katie didn't understand me. I'm glad at least he understood how frustrating it was to repeat the same situation. I'm the same. I'm frustrated at school, too. What? Are you really? You always seem so happy. Rika Furude is supposed to be happy at school. That's why I act that way. Hearing the same things over and over again is like torture. It's easy for me to change what Satoko cooks for dinner. I can simply volunteer to cook instead of her. But I can't change what the teacher teaches at school every day. I have no choice but to be quiet and listen to her lecture. Yeah, there's nothing you can really do. You can't just tell the teacher to move on because you already know what she's teaching you. But th this is a different story. It's a game. It is a game, but it's already predetermined. You don't know that. After all, we're b being split into five tables by drawing lots, right? Plus, each group gets to choose what game their table plays. There's no way to predict what games we'll do battle over, or what exciting turnabouts await us today. But I can make a good guess. No, you can't. Katie smiled as he contradicted me. That smile seemed so ignorant to me. While the groups will be decided by drawing lots, each club member will be in a different group. Katie, you'll be sitting over there. My table will be right there. 
I'll be playing a fishing game. You'll be playing a game called Billionaire. I don't know how, but last time we were broken into five separate groups. It couldn't have been a coincidence. I'm sure Mion did something to ensure it would end up like that. I'm 100% sure. As for the games we play, I'm not totally sure, but... If each member in the group follows the same thinking patterns, they'll probably end up making the same choices. If you roll dice any times, you begin to approach the average. One person's spontaneous act can be random, but multiple people's thoughts can be averaged out for the most part. The more people that are involved, the more difficult it is to alter the path of fate. That's why I'm pretty sure that we'll end up playing the same games. Cage seems surprised to hear my prediction. What the hell? Is that like a premonition? How can you be so sure? That's what fate is all, all about. <laughs> fate, huh? That makes me want to smash that being to pieces. He smiled at me again. I knew that he was just smiling without reason. But I felt a small hope from him. After all, KT really did shatter fate before. But that was just a miracle that happened in my previous life. I couldn't expect him to do the same in this life one. Otherwise, I would be worn down by my high expectations again. Alright, we're going to decide our groups by drawing lots from this box. The club members go first. Mion drew first, then Satko followed. The results were the same as the last time. I really don't want to fight against a club member at the very start. I'm sorry if we get the same group, Rikachan. Don't worry. Your table's over there. Mine is right there. Whatever you say, you wit you watch. <laughs> Keiji looked upset. See? My predictions are always right. It was a 20% chance. Anyone can make a random guess. Cage told me that it was just a coincidence. Then what if I predicted my seat right too? What's the percentage for that? Um, it's 20 to 20, so 4%. I'll believe you if you get, get it right with a percent that low. Katie grinned at me, believing such a chance was impossible. It's your turn now, Rikachan. Mion handed me the box of slips. No matter what I did, I'd be getting that table. There was a reason behind it. Mion was doing something to make sure I, that we all get a different table. I thought about why Mion would do that. With the information I've gathered about Mion over many years, I could see her reasoning. She probably thinks that she'll feel bad if a member loses in the first stage. You're right. If the club members are in the same group, someone will have to lose. If everyone was in a different group, we'd all have a chance to move on to a, different, to a second stage. That's why she was controlling this draw. I put my hand inside the box. I could almost feel myself nodding off. I could feel several folded pieces of paper inside it. But if you thought for a moment, it was odd. No matter which one I chose, I'd never get any other table. I wonder how she's making it so you sit at that last table. Me too. Only Mion knows. All I know is that no matter which paper I choose, I'll be sitting at that last table. Ah, I got it. All the papers in this box are the same? They must be. I bet Mion set something a kind of trap on this box. It was probably a box for a magic show or something. There could be some kind of gimmick inside the box, and she can switch what's inside of it. Depending on who's drawing the paper, she'd change out the lots and control the result. I didn't know exactly how, but I was sure she was doing something. I didn't even need to know how she was doing it. The most important thing was why. Me, I don't know which one to pick. No matter which one you pick, your fate is already decided. She was admitting her herself. I was certain. Based on what I felt inside, there were less than ten pieces of paper inside of this box. In other words, there were hidden pieces of paper that I couldn't touch somewhere inside the box. I smiled at Mion as I figured out her trick, but she had no clue why I was smiling. I'm taking this one. Sure, let me see. Aha! Wow, the club members are all divided into separate groups. 
Mion behaved as though this was news to her. She's such an actress. The other contestants made a dissatisfied noise. They'd have to face a club member no matter which table they got. Keiichi was surprised too. Not only because we were divided. See? Our fate is already decided. I smiled at him in return. Keiichi was in denial for a moment, but then he smiled back at me. The possibility was 1 in 25. I'm impressed. It was not. I predicted that Mion and Satsuko would be at a different table, so the possibility was even lower than that. Keiichi understood that, but normal people like him can't understand that meaning of fate. That's why he put it off as a coincidence. But Keiichi, what if my prediction is right about what game you'll be playing? The possibility we will be one in billions. There are a lot of games in this store. What if that prediction is right too? Will he still believe it's just a coincidence? I stayed quiet in my seat and waited to see what game my group was going to decide on. They were going to choose the fishing game. I can't expect them to choose anything other than that. I can't have high expectations, otherwise I'll be hurt again. One of the boys stood up. He walked towards the shelf full of games and picked up one box. He lifted the box above his head and turned around so he could show it to us. I closed my eyes as he did so, but I could still hear what he was saying. Check this out. Do you guys remember this? We should play this one. Yeah, it's the one with the spinning fish, right? I could taste the bitter chemicals from my brain in my mouth. I clenched my lips and tried to endure the numbing feeling. Oh, well. I'm sorry. I guess I'm not doing well today. For some reason, I can't just accept this flow. It wasn't because I wasn't feeling well, of course. It was because of my emotions. Our powers are getting weaker, and we can only rewind about two weeks of our lives. I was feeling that the end was near for us. In order for me to change my tragic fate, I need more time to prepare. But I can only go back two weeks. That means my power to resist my fate has significantly weakened. Even if I become as weak as a small leaf in the river, I should be able to do something in order to change my path. But if I can only go back to the point where I'm getting ready to be swallowed into the whirlpool, there's no chance for me to escape it. I lived for so long, believing that I could eventually escape my fate and survive. I believed that I had a chance in every moment of every life I lived. But there are limits to those chances. There are so many limits in my repeated lives. And perhaps... This might be my last chance. That may be why I'm feeling so restless. Stop it, Rika. The harder you think about it, the worse it will be on your mind. I know. Just be quiet already. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. My brain was numb, as if surrounded by a gray mist. But Rika ch could change this one pretty easily if she chose the game for her table. I was inside the crowded toy store, but felt very far away from everyone else. The tighter I closed my eyes and the harder I clenched my teeth, the emptier my head became. No, 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 no. Rika. Rika. Are you okay? Huh. Huh. Um. As I tried to focus, I became conscious again. Hanyu looked at me with concern. I tend to lose my mind easily right after coming back from death. I usually have more time to relax and get used to my new life, but I have no time for that now. The Watanagashi Festival is only two weeks away. Oh, it's actually further away than I thought. I can't just relax and wait for myself to get used to things. Don't be a wimp, Rika. Don't be a wimp. Fighting against fate. Fight against fate. But even if I do, that fate always betrays me, and I grieve. What if I did the opposite? What if I didn't fight against fate? A few weeks after the Watanagashi Festival of 1983, I will die because I am fated to do so. Fight, don't fight. 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 As I repeat the same words, they start to, started to lose all meaning. I felt like I was chanting something. I bit my tongue in my mind and forced myself to stop thinking about it. I was calming down a little bit. When I opened my eyes, I saw the fishing game right in front of me, as well as my pole. Someone placed it there while I had my eyes closed. It was as if I was seeing the immovable reality of fate right in front of me. It felt like a final verdict to me. 
What do you think, Keiichi? This is what fate is all about, as he plays a different game. Do I want to earn his agreement or his sympathy? I stood up and walked towards Keiichi's table. His group couldn't decide on a game, so the store owner was deciding for them, just like the last time. The store owner will pick the game of life. They said billionaire earlier. <laughs> it's kind of unfair to play a game that your opponent chooses. We couldn't decide on anything because we kept refusing each other's suggestions. Has your table decided on what to play? You can see it for yourself. He looked at my table and saw the fishing game there. Keiichi was surprised to see that my prediction was right again. He also remembered that I predicted his game too. So you're saying the owner is going to bring out the game of life just as you predicted, but we translated it as billionaire earlier? I'm pretty good at predicting things. Nipa? Are you serious? Alright, I'll believe you if he really brings us the game of life. You bet. Your group is going to play the game of life. Fine, I'm willing to bet you. Don't you cheat and talk him into it. He wants you to play a game he has a lot of, so he'll be bringing that one out. I remember it was covered by dust when he gave them gave it to them last time. Since we had to buy the game if we lost, he was trying to sell products he had a surplus of. Therefore, he won't be choosing any game at random. He'd be looking for one with bad sales, with a strong will to do so. That will of his is going to make the pull of fate all the stronger. In that sense, there's no guarantee that he'd be choosing the game of life specifically. He might choose something else that's also overstocked. The owner finally reappeared with the box covered in dust. Whoa! See? I told you so. He has a Game of Life box in his hands. The part of me that hoped it wouldn't be the Game of Life tasted bitterness at the betrayal, but the cynical part of me that expected it happen to happen found it amusing in a way. I felt like my personality was twisting more and more. Why'd you pick that game? Huh? <laughs> well, I just picked it at random. I found it in the pile of inventory I have it in the back. It's not like I brought the most beat up one. When he heard that the owner chose the game randomly, Keiichi shrugged his shoulders in confusion. That must be his way of surrendering. Hey, Rikachan, is this really a prediction? Nipa. <laughs> well, some old people from the village once told me that you're the reincarnation of oyashiro sama They told me that you have special powers. They said your predictions are always accurate. Is that really true? I was surprised that Keiichi actually believed the superstitious stories he heard from the elderly villagers. I just know that which is destined to happen. To make it clear, it's because I've already witnessed this world once before. Damn, I can't even make fun of you. Keiichi seemed like he was just fooling around. He probably only thinks I'm goofing around and acting haughty because my random predictions all came true. I had hope for him. I thought the owner might bring a different game because Keiichi once had the power to change fate. But that didn't happen. I'm not surprised, but I felt betrayed again. Huh. It hurts. I won the bet. I speak to Keiichi sarcastically. I want him to understand that no one can change the path of fate. However, Keiichi did nothing but smile. <laughs> Don't get carried away, Rikachan. Don't just say that you can read the future. For a guy, words like destiny and fate mean a lot more than you think. They're not things you can figure out that easily. Me? I have no idea what he was trying to say, but he made me nervous. It wasn't a scary feeling. No, it was closer to hope. You said it was fate that the owner would choose the game of life. I have to admit that your prediction was correct. But you also said something else. What did I say? You said I was fated to play it. Yes, it was indeed his fate. Fate can change sometimes with uncertainty in time. But the possibility it would change in this situation was very slight. Time for him to say, choose something else. I doubted that anything would turn out differently. In that case, I'll change that fate. Eh? Keiichi stood up in a hurry. Then he started talking to Tomito and Okumura, his group members. Sorry, but I own that game at home. I know every little rule about it. What? Is that true? Yep, so that won't be a fair game for us to play. Sir, I'm sorry, but can you give us a different game? Sure. I'll bring you guys a different one. The owner picked up the game of life and took it back into storage. As I remained there in shock, he returned with a game called Pop-Up Pirate. <laughs> How about this one? Oh, that's the one where we stab a knife inside the barrel. What do you think, guys? This is a fair game, isn't it? 
Yeah, the rules are simple enough. Let's play that one. We got a deal now. We're going to play Pop-Up Pirate. Keiichi winked at me as I stood there with my mouth open. It looked like he had just forcefully changed my prediction. But for me, it's not that simple. It was supposed to be fate. That's why the owner brought the game of life to their table. They were supposed to play that game. That's what happened the last time. That's what was supposed to happen. But he just changed that fate in front of my eyes like it was nothing. It's as if someone asked me to stand on an egg on its end. As I struggled to do so, Keiichi forcefully cracked the egg and made it stand up in front of me. I should have had a far greater power than Keiichi, but why was I feeling so weak? Was it because I wasn't trying to fight against fate so I wouldn't get hurt? Because I was going with the flow without trying too hard? What was I thinking? You looked so bored just a few minutes ago. I know why. You didn't want to play the fishing game, did you? Yeah. I'm not going to hide it anymore. And that's easy. So I'm a witch who's been living for more than a hundred years? So I thought I was better than everyone just because I can see the paths of fate? That's stupid. I really am so stupid. Keiichi tapped me on the back. He was urging me to return to my table. The sensation of his touch filled up my heart with emotion. I wasn't going to stand idly by anymore. I thought I couldn't cheat fate. I thought two weeks wasn't enough. But Keiichi justified his fate in a matter of five minutes. I feel bad for the fishies when I play the fishing game. I want to play something else. The other people looked at me with confused expressions. Their reactions were scaring me. Right at that moment, I could really feel that I was facing the impenetrable wall of fate. Even so, I had nothing to be scared of. Sure. What game do you want to play? We'll play wherever you want. They accepted my suggestion and gave up on the fishing game so easily. That's right. I used to be much more aggressive before. But I became so tired and bitter and mean. I gave in to fate. But I'm not going to yield anymore. Keiichi taught me that. He didn't have any memories from his previous life. But Keiichi was still Keiichi. He'd never give in to fate. For the first time in a long while, I feel motivated to fight. If I want to, I can change destiny in five minutes. I have two whole weeks to work with. I'm different now. I'm going to fight against fate. Let's do our best. In contrast to my motivation, Hanyu was wearing a sad expression. <laughs> Persona. Lots of faces happened. But in the end, the games were cancelled. Just like last time. I see. We can't hold you here if you have to go help your uncle. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty small store after all. But you know, couldn't he have guessed that if he did a bargain sale, his place would be packed? I can't believe he's selling a carton of eggs for only 10 yen. As we were getting ready to move on to the next stage, Mion got a call from work. This was fated to happen too. If I was still feeling depressed, I would have been disgusted with the situation. But after learning what it felt like to change fate, I was in a good mood. Keiji and Mion seemed like they kept regretting that they were unable to sell the match. They really are such good friends. They're so close. I feel kind of jealous. How? Ooh. We really do not have any other boys his age in our class, do we? I suppose Mion san is something like a good male friend to Keiji san. Ah, uh, it's that discussion again. Do do do. Next moment, the owner came out from the store for the dolls. Four paper bags in his hands. I remember he gave us gifts as a reward for today. I think there were dolls inside. Here are your rewards for today. Hey, Uncle Yoshiro, don't I get one? He was giving them only to us. Mion didn't get anything because she's a family member. That's what happened last time, too. Oh, look, look. Something cute is inside. Sakura let out a cheer of joy as, joy as she saw a cute doll inside of her bag. Rena reacted the same way. Wow. This is so cute. I can take it home with me? Really? Did I get one too? Wow. Look at this cute doll. Keiichi got a gorgeous, expensive-looking doll. 
It was by far the best one. It was adorable even to my eyes. Sako, Renan, and Mion were feeling the same way. <laughs> Keichan got the one that fits him the least. Mion started making fun of him right away. She was only saying that because she was jealous that Keiichi got a doll that really she really wanted. This is pretty and cute. I can admit that, but it's not really my type of toy. Yeah, people will think you're a pervert if you carry that thing around. Mion just can't be honest with herself. It was obvious that she was just trying to make him give up the doll so she could have it herself. She should just admit that and ask Keiichi for it. But that's the cute side of Mion. I bet Keiichi can never understand that. <laughs> Keiichi can't keep the doll after receiving that much bullying from Mion. He was thinking about who he should give it to. He probably didn't want to give it to Mion. Time froze for a moment. Hanyu whispers something in my ear. Rika, do you remember? Yes. I advised him on who he should give the doll to. I didn't... Hmm? I actually get to choose? Um, just a moment. I remember what happened, but I'm still going to choose the wrong thing. <laughs> I remembered. I remember that Keiichi's insensitive decision eventually caused the fatal ending. That was fate. He was internally thinking he should give it to her. She was the only one who didn't get anything. But the hesitation of da da da, training as a different male friend, but where to give it to another boy. And he wanted to continue, he didn't want to ruin, that's why he couldn't, even though that was only how he felt she wanted to be treated like a girl. Wait. Let me go back and see these choices in Japanese, maybe. Because, is this... Let me see if I can... No. Hmm. Oops. <laughs> Wait. This is always in English, no matter what? Huh. That's interesting. Anyway. Let's do I did nothing. I thought about telling him, but I stayed quiet because I wanted to believe in him. When we were in the same situation, Keiichi gave the doll to Rena. Mian was deeply hurt and the tragedy happened. If I didn't do anything watching now, things were going to end up the same, but I'm sure that Keiichi deeply regretted the fact that he didn't give it in the previous world. While I was aware he didn't have any memories from that world, I was hoping that his heart vaguely remembered that strong emotion. I challenged him, without telling him anything. Keiichi was contemplating whether he finally he should give the doll to Mion or Rena. He finally opens it. Mion, if you think I would look with the, like a pervert with this doll, who do you think deserves to have it? Huh? Uh, I don't know. All I'm saying is that dolls aren't for boys. I see. I guess you can have it. Here. Alright, this is a better choice. Keiichi tossed the doll to Mion as if passing her a basketball. As if forcing her to carry his bag or something. Mion's face quickly turned red. Feeling shy, Keiichi turned away from her. That was amazing. Keiichi just made a miracle happen again. He did it without any memory of his previous life. Well, this only happened once, so... It was exactly the same situation as in the previous world, but he made a totally different decision. Keiichi. Rika, this might just be a coincidence, you know? A strong will is directly related to fate. If his will to give the doll to Reno was weak, this might have been a result of that. But I don't feel it was just a coincidence. I believe that Keiichi remembers something in his heart, and because of that, he made some progress. Mion, having turned red, insisted that the cute doll would be a much better fit for Arena. Her attitude made it clear that she really wanted the doll, but couldn't be honest about it. I just... This old man just thinks that cute dolls like this are... More for girly girls, you know? This doll doesn't deserve to be owned by a tomboy like me. <laughs> I know that you want it. It's written all over your face. <laughs> no, it's not written on my face. You're lying. Stop being mean. Mion shook her head with an embarrassed look, pretending she wasn't interested in the doll. Everyone here knew that she wanted it. I'm just going to reload real quick and see um, what's it called. I want to see how this thing goes out now that I've tried both. Because obviously he'll do it here as well. 
but I remembered. I remembered that is eventually that was fate. Whether he should give it to Mion, she was the only one who didn't get it, so it was natural. But the hesitation he was feeling was because Mion was such a close friend. As if she was a male friend, it would be weird to give it to another doll. And if he gave it to Mion, he would start looking at her as a girl from that point onward. He wanted to continue his friendship with Mion without thinking about their difference in gender. He didn't want to ruin the relationship they had at that moment. That's why he couldn't give it to Mion. Even though she was the only one without a doll, he felt so hesitant. Of course, that was only how he felt. Mion didn't agree. In actuality, she wished she, he would treat her more like a girl. I walked closer to Keiji so I could talk to him. If Mion heard me talk, telling Keiji to give her the doll, she would resist taking it. I had to make sure that no one but Keiji could hear me. I also had to make this very quick. I poked Keiji in the back. Huh? Keiji. The person who really wants that doll is the one who's bullying you the most about it. I was going to say that, but Keiji opened his mouth first before he could even say anything to him. I know. I hadn't said anything to him yet, but Keiji told me that he knew. I felt confused, not knowing what he just meant. He turned around to face Mion, smiling mischievously. Mion, if you think I would look like a... Well, there's the same one, I think. I think I can hit skip here. Oh, it's the same thing. Yep, that's the same one. That was surprising. He got my message just by getting a tap on his back. Was Keiji always that smart? Just one tap was all it took? I don't think he would have done the same in a previous life. That was just a small incident, but this world is definitely different from the previous one. What could it be? Perhaps he would have given that doll to me on even if I didn't poke him in the back. There's Hanyu, maybe. Does he have memories from previous worlds after all? No way, he can't. That can't be happening yet. I know for a fact that he doesn't have those memories, but there might be something imperceptible somewhere in his heart. He might remember some of the regrets he felt in the previous worlds. That's why he strongly felt he should be giving the doll to me on this time. After repeating so many lives, I'm the only one who can even notice the slight growth of, growth of his. But I see it. It's clearly visible to me. Mion, having turned red, insisted that it would be a much better fit for Rena. Her attitude made it clear that she really wanted it, but couldn't be honest about it. There's the skipping that I can do. There it is. Alright, I'm going back for a second. Everyone here knew that she wanted it. We all looked at Mion with big smiles on our faces. Hey, it's not like I could only give this doll to a girl. Just think of it as my gift to you, as a friend. Is that so? So you would give a doll to a boy too? Well, I would choose something else if I had a choice. But anyway, guys would never reject a gift unless there's something shady going on. It's just me being generous. Why would you refuse it? Oh. Just a little stretch. So I can accept this doll, even though I'm not a girly girl? Everyone thought Mion's reaction was hilarious. Renato couldn't stop chuckling. Satsuko and I burst out laughing too. Mion, having realized she was being laughed at, got even more embarrassed. I'm offering this to you as a friend. I don't want to hear that you're not cherishing it. Cherishing it. Cherishing. But, okay. Um, this old man just wants to make it clear that he's not accepting this because he wants this doll. He's taking it because you said it's a gift from you as a friend. He's taking it as a courtesy so he doesn't disrespect your generosity. Anya was cracking up too. She was laughing in a loud voice, knowing that no one could hear her anyway. This really was a good... Was this a really a good way to resolve the problem? I thought that Mion's issue in the previous life was that she wanted Keiji to treat her like a girl. She got the doll, but Keiji still wasn't treating her that way. Still, Mion looked very happy. Maybe it wasn't a big deal after all. I'm sure that Mion would, will take that doll with her to bed tonight. She'll kiss it goodnight too. I could bet on that. It was written all over her face. She's finally accepted it. It was a challenge just for me to give her a doll. Keiji turned around to face us, smiling bitterly. <laughs> you did it, though. Yep, it was perfect. I'm impressed that you managed it. mion -san was hilarious. It was obvious the moment you looked that she really wanted the doll. Isn't that the truth? <laughs> hey, you guys. Are you saying rude things about this old man? Knock it off already. 
Don't you have to get to work? You're going to be late. <laughs> you guys better watch yourselves. <laughs> Mion seems like she wanted to stay longer, but after looking at her watch as she started... But after looking at her watch, comma, she started heading to work. Everyone was wearing smiles on their faces. Today was such a fun day. Everyone had lots of fun and no one was hurt. I've repeated the same day so many times before, but this time something was different. It's like I rolled a die and got a six, and then I rolled it again and got a six again. I don't know if this was just a lucky coincidence or if it was meant to be. It's as if the god of fate is celebrating my motivation to fight against him. Now that I think about that god's note, there is someone who's sort of become a god in that previous chapter. Sort of. Just a little bit. In the game of life, one road leads to another, leads to another. Good times with Oya shows <laughs> What? I was watching TV with, TV with Satoko and Hanyu after eating dinner. It was a variety show and the performers were making the audience laugh. We were laughing too. Ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh. ho Look at you now. Oh, 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 but it looks so painful. Me. Nipa. While the three of us were enjoying ourselves, in reality, there was only Satsuko and me in the room. I am the only one who can see Hanyu. Satsuko can't see her at all. Hanyu responds every time Satsuko says anything. Satsuko can't hear her, but Hanyu still responds to her when she's in a good mood. It's like she's answering a question asked on TV. You could even compare it to playing house. She started playing this game with other people, because she can't communicate with anyone else but me. It's hmm, a good tip for streaming, actually. Hanyu always attends our club meetings and has a good time there, too. If she could communicate with my other friends, she could have been a good match for us. But I don't want to hurt her feelings by thinking about that. If the story of the miracle written in the old scriptures is true, if it's really Hanyu who performed it, she's someone who had tremendous power long ago. But now she doesn't have any spiritual power. And I'm the only one who can even see her. Hanyu has never told me how she lost her power. I just have to assume that her spiritual power diminished over time. There's a legend in the Furude family that says that Oyashiro sama will be reborn if a girl is born to the family seven generations in a row. With my birth, Hanyu was finally able to communicate with a human for the first time in centuries. Does that mean that Oyashiro sama has returned? The villager's image of Oyashiro sama doesn't quite match up with that of Hanyu. Especially when I see her lying on her belly and watching TV with Satko. Alright, gonna keep going for a bit more. Now I'm gonna take a bath and break and feed the cat soon. And then still continue. Keiji's house. Well, looks like somewhere. <laughs> oh, school. Don't know why they skipped to the, didn't skip to the school. What? Uh, I know I've heard some people mention it before, but they were serious about that? This world always has a lot of nice suggestions, but they're mostly out of politeness, right? They're just saying some they're just something you laugh off and reply with. That would be nice. But those ideas generally end as jokes, so it's crazy when they turn real. Yeah, I'm serious. Uncle Yoshiro was giving you a ton of praise too. He said it was amazing how well that pop-up pirate game went in the toy store yesterday. What? I had no idea. No idea you could play that game like that. I wish they showed that. I should mention that some of the kids around my table wanted to play with you too. Keiji is a genius when it comes to playing games. You know, I wasn't just playing around. I was giving it my all because I had no choice but to win. I guess we made it look like a lot of fun for the audience though. Shion, you definitely have a blast no matter what club activity you're doing, Keichan. The coach was saying that the Hinamizawa fighters would be ha so happy if you joined the team. That's very true. Dr. Eri had nothing but great things to say about you at the meeting last night, my raccoon. You had the ability to bring people joy, far more than you think you do. 
You, you think so? This old man didn't mention your name just because you're his friend. He did it because he's confident you can do the job. Oh, what's this job? I was there at the meeting too, and no one was against the idea. Wait, 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 wait. We're so... Okay. We switched to Keiichi's point of view here. If it isn't obvious. If it's not obvious. Since Rika's out in view. My raccoon, you honestly do have a good reputation around the village. I remember this story a bit. I've heard good things about you in Okonomiya, too. What you did in the match between the Himizawa fighters and Okonomiya titans was legendary. It really was incredible. The reporters were there to see Kamehameha on, but they were more impressed by you. They're talking about that rigged baseball match I set up with Kamehameha-kun. The public did end up believing that talented pitcher walked me out of fear for my insight. Kamehameha-kun and I have entered a strange relationship since then. I'd really rather not talk about it right now. What do you think, Keichi-kun? I think you can do it. I'm backing you up, too. I definitely think you should be in charge of the Watanagashi Planning Committee. Watanagashi is an annual festival, village festival held in June. It's supposed to be the biggest event in the village, and most of the people living here gather together for it. Since this is a major event, they always organize a committee to plan the festival a few months in advance. The festival is only two weeks away, and I just moved to this village. But now they want me to join that committee? Look, first of all, I don't even know what you do in a committee. You don't need to be too concerned about it. The job we unanimously want you to fill is hosting the auction. What, what the hell is that? Do you want me to sell bananas or something? Well, let me explain. We're holding an auction event for the first time this year. We're going to auction off don donated items just to see how it turns out. Wait, did it say it's the first time? Yep. <laughs> There's kind of a long story behind it. We wanted to do something in which everyone can participate using donated items as prizes. But the elder members decided to distribute the prizes using something other than a lottery for their own reasons. Yeah, an auction sounds funner. Put it simply, our hag of a grandmother let her temper get to her and wouldn't back down after that. But she didn't really consider any specifics. Yep. <laughs> Anyway, we had to come up with how to utilize those donated items. At that point, we thought of doing an auction. That sounds like fun. You might be able to get something good for a really cheap price. I'm really surprised they aren't missing Shion, like from Riku's point of view or anything. It's fun to just watch the show too. The items were all donated, so they were free, huh? That committee sure is good at making money. The profit will be going into the beer fund for the village community's winter getaway trip. <laughs> it's not fair. You're not ready for beer yet, Furudesan. That's the issue? I think I understand what's going on now. But still, I've never done anything like it before. I'm sure you can do it, Keichikun. I bet you'd do really well if they were told if they told you you'd get to keep 10% of the profits. Well, yeah. If I can gain something for producing results, I'll do my best at it. On the other hand, you might be facing a dreadful penalty game if you don't produce anything. Wait a minute, Satsuko. Why would I agree to a risky deal like that? Don't forget, they're the ones asking for my help. I'm a very busy guy, you know? Try asking for my, my agent first. <laughs> Alright, Keichan. If you want some kind of compensation, we can talk about it. I really want you to be a part of this. Will you make a deal? Hmm. That sounds interesting. I wonder why I should ask for it. Hmm. Made outfit? We're always talking about punishments, but it's our first time talking about a reward. That's true. We're always fighting for something, huh? Ren is right. The whole purpose of our club activities is to escape the punishments we come up with. Even if we win, we never get a prize or reward for it. Keiichi has no idea how to respond to something that sounds too good to be true. Maybe Michan can come up with a good idea. It's hard to decide on what you want, isn't it? Let me see. Ah, how about this? An admission ticket to Angel Mort's dessert fi fiesta. Don't be too cheap, sis. Why don't you give him three years worth of admission? Hey, that 
Sounds more like a deluxe reward to me. I heard that some people pay lots of money for that ticket. Are you sure you can hook me up with three years worth of admission? All right, caffeine time. Be right back. All right, thanks for waiting. Let's go to the next one. Of course I can, but you have to do a good job. I'm sure he will. With Cage Coon there, it's going to be heaps of fun. I feel the same way. I'm really looking forward to the auction now. Yeah, you could probably get people to line up for Takoyaki that doesn't even contain octopus. Hey, Takoyaki without octopus, that's impossible. No, no, I'm pretty sure you could do it. In Chapter 2 you did. Yeah, you'd probably say it was a healthier kind of takoyaki. Are you making fun of me or what? So, what do you think, my raccoon? I think you'll do a wonderful job. Chia-sensei was also on the committee. She must have backed up me on suggestion when she brought my name up at the last meeting. I'd also love to see what kind of magic you can do. Nipa. A good auction always depends on how good a speaker the host is. Sounds like it's going to be Keiichi Myro's big show. It'll be so much fun just to watch. Hey, I haven't accepted the offer yet. Don't worry, Keiichi Kun. You can do it. You're saying that because you don't have to do. You don't have to. How? Oh, that's not true. The principal suddenly opened his mouth. What? My Kun. In my opinion, you will do a fine job. Hmm. As a man, isn't it your responsibility to meet people's expectations? If I had to, I'm sure I could do it. Mion has made me do so many different things for the club, and I've learned a lot from that. Besides, this would be the first time I could get a reward without, without having to worry about punishment. It should be fun, too. This is the first time so many people were counting on me like this. To be honest, it made me pretty happy. Still, I was worried about getting dragged into something that required a lot of work. I couldn't erase that thought from my mind. But I was in Hinamizawa. The people in this village would never do anything to betray me. They genuinely believed that it would do a lot to liven up the festival if I became the host of their auction. I've only been here for a short period of time, but I know that the people here are honest and kind. Fine. As a man, I'm going to do it. I'll take care of it. Wait and see. I'll make it the greatest auction in the world. Don't forget to get me that Angel Mort Pass. I'll make sure to do a good enough job that I'll deserve 10 years worth of tickets. Good for you, Kei-chan. Everyone gave me a round of applause. How many times had this happened in my life? Not once. This was the first time I'd ever been applauded. By the way, I'm surprised that no one disagreed with the suggestion at the meeting. There are lots of old people in the village committee. 
I'm a young guy who only just moved here. I've known for a long while that Mion has a lot of influence locally, but I couldn't believe that everyone in the committee would just accept it, would accept it just like that. Most of them are that kind of hard-headed old people, but the new generation is gradually taking over, you know? We won the dam conflict, and now we're aiming to build a new era and grow more and more prosperous. That's why we value the involvement of young people, and people from outside the village, too. You're young, and you're from the city. You also have a good reputation, so you're the perfect guy for this. I have a good reputation, huh? I have no idea why so many people have heard of me. It's something to do with Michan's punishments, I think. I think... I knew it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. I'll call your parents about it tonight, so please let them know when you get back home today, okay? I'm sure my parents will have no problem with it. They won't have any objections to raise, at least. They might ask me why my name was brought up, though. <laughs> Chia Sensei and the principal went back to the teacher's office after the discussion ended. We were in the middle of lunch break at the moment. Chi Sensei and the principal had come along together, and Mion scared me by saying that they all had something to talk to me about. My stomach wasn't digesting my lunch particularly well. My Bar-san, I heard everything. Good for you. It's a big honor being chosen by the village committee. Hey there, Tomikun Okumura-kun. I'd love to give that honor to you. <laughs> no, thank you. I wouldn't be able to handle it. I realized the whole class was talking about me. They were saying how fun Watsunagashi was going to be, and how high their expectations were for it. I might have taken on a huge responsibility. I needed to do my best to succeed at it. By the way, I forgot something. My granny made tons of ohagi. She told me to give them to my classmates. Mion clapped her hands as she remembered, and took a box out of her bag. She opened the lid, letting us see a bunch of ohagi neatly packed inside. Wow, there really are a lot. I think there might be enough for everyone in the class to have one. How oh, they look so yummy and cute. For some reason, my granny is very good at making ohagi. That's because Sohei used to love them. Ah, oh, yeah, I heard my gramps used to love ohagi, like ohagi. He ate tons of them. For your grandma, Ohagi is something that makes her remember your late grandpa, huh? You think so? I thought Gramps liked canned food. <laughs> you don't like canned food, do you, Shion? Oh yeah, the story. What? Is that true? Why so? Well, it's because of the smell. I just don't like the smell of the metal. Oh, is that so? After always forcing me to eat my squash, it turns out that you two have something you can't eat? To tell you the truth, she hates canned food because... <laughs> Come on, sis. Don't you dare tell anyone. I don't know what's going on, but it seems Mion knows a secret about Shion. Tell it to us. Go on. The reason why Shion doesn't like canned food must have been something pretty funny. The two sisters battled for a while. The machine gun knee kicks Mion launched from close quarters weren't bad. I don't think she expected Shion to land a capture suplex off it. I guess Shion is the stronger of the two siblings. She is older after all, haha. Huh? I'd rather tell you the truth than have you hear it from my sis. See, there's this bad guy named Kosai. He once told me, when I was still young and innocent, that there's sometimes human meat mixed in with canned food. <laughs> I've heard of an urban legend like that before. Me too. I once heard that there's dog meat mixed into beef bowls and worms inside burgers. Worms inside burgers one definitely was a, an urban legend. Uh, are you quite serious? I can never eat beef bowls or burgers again after hearing something like that. You see, Satsuko? It was a very traumatic thing, traumatic thing for me. You have my sympathy, but I still have yet to forget about how you made me eat a full course squash meal. You need to let go of that one. That meal was delicious. <laughs> because we're talking about this. I'm starting to get worried there might be something mixed into this ohagi too. Like a needle. Oh, well at least with the ohagi that I brought. 
You can't really be sure that there's nothing else inside. <laughs> I'll hug you that Neon brought. When you consider that, it's only natural to suspect that she probably did something to them. What's going on? I felt like I was forgetting something. But I didn't remember anything that I was forgetting. It was like one of those deja vu moments. I'd never been in this situation, but my mind was telling me that I'd been there before. What's wrong, Keiichi? Nothing. I just feel like Mion has given me Ohagi before. So this is the first time, right? Is it, Michon? I think this is the first time. You must be mistaking it for something else. According to my memory, this is the first time Mion-san has brought Ohagi to school. <laughs> Rena. Ah, I know. You're being cautious because these are from this old man, aren't you? That's nothing to brag about. I think you should be reflecting on your regular behavior. Gotta see Shion in that outfit now. <laughs> You're right. I wouldn't feel this way if Rena brought me Ohagi. Rena's really good at cooking. They're small, but very carefully made. Huh? I've never made a hoggy before. What? What was I saying? Why did I say that Rena had made a hoggy before? Why would I know that Rena makes me her uh, makes her uh, hoggy small but neat? Hmm? I had no idea where that memory was coming from. I could only assume that it was an error in my brain. Mion was saying that this was her first time bringing a hoggy to class. As I tilted my head in confusion. Everyone started reaching inside the box. Rena took out one for me and put it on the lid. I stared at it closely. What was I so concerned about? Mion said that I was probably concerned that she did something to the Ohagi, but it wasn't quite that. I really didn't know how to explain it. I felt like I was forgetting something important. I'd forgotten something important, and all I had was the obligation to remember it. In front of me was nothing but a single Ohagi that came from Mion's house. I was frustrated, but I really couldn't think of anything. There's no way I could remember it, because I didn't know anything. Keiichi, you've been staring at your Ohagi for a long time. What's the matter? Oh, it's just, I'm experiencing deja vu. Don't you get it sometimes? It's your first time seeing something, but you feel like you've seen it before? So, you feel like Mion has given you a Ohagi in the past? <laughs> I'm sure it's just my imagination. Mion just told me that she had never brought Ohagi to school before. Keiichi, you can't have memories of what didn't happen. If you remember something, I'm sure it really happened before. Rikachan told me something strange. I didn't usually take her random comments seriously. But ever since I saw her making those predictions in the toy store, I've been curious about her special powers. I felt like she was telling me something deep. It's weird to hear that from you, since you're so great at making predictions. Are you talking about the cycle of reincarnation or something? I don't know much about religion. I just want to tell you that, if you know about something, that's something that happened to you. I want you to try and remember what happened. I don't want you to treat it like you're just mistaken. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Um, I guess. I was a little surprised by how serious she sounded. I always thought that Riku was just an innocent girl who fooled around all the time, saying things like me and Nipa. But all of a sudden, she seems like a totally different girl. Was I supposed to take it as a joke? The serious look on her face told me it wasn't the time for jokes. But if that's what you're telling me, then I guess I got Ohagi from Neon in a previous life. I won't make fun of you, so please tell me everything. Why did me give you that Ohagi? The more I think about it, the more I think it's just my imagination. Maybe it was just a dream. I don't care if it was a dream. You must remember something. Please tell me. What was up with her? She seemed so curious about it. I didn't think this story was that interesting. Her asking so much started making me feel uncomfortable. Still, something told me that I needed to talk to Rikachan about everything I could. Maybe she could predict my future by reading my dreams. I should tell her everything. After all, she's the Shrine Maiden for Uyasha or something. Well, I think I skipped school that day. I had a cold or something. 
My memory was scattered all over my brain, like powder. I could see myself standing in front of the door. Mion was there, and someone else was standing there, too. I think it was Ren. Mion brought me Ohagi so I would get better. I think she told me that her grandma made it, just like today. And then? Well, then I ate that Ohagi, after they went back home. Then I found something inside the Ohagi. <laughs> I'm sure I saw it in a comic book or something. It's mixed up in my memory, but I'm sure I read it somewhere in some comic book. Because it can't be true. <laughs> Keiji, tell me what happened. What did you find inside the Ohagi? Well, I read this scary comic book when I was little, and there was a sewing needle inside of someone's burger. <laughs> you remember what Shion was saying just now? It can be traumatic to hear a story like that when you're young. I didn't remember much about that comic. I think it was about this girl who had an accident and held a grudge against the person who caused the injury on her face. It was a really cheap plot now that I think about it. But since I was still a little kid, that comic really scared me. In one chapter, the girl casts a curse on the guy's food. He eats a burger with sewing needles inside it and he goes all Gah! or something like that. It still freaked me out. The image was so grotesque and shocking to me. That grew into a kind of trauma and for a while I searched for sewing needles inside my food every time I ate some. I couldn't eat burgers for a while for that reason. When my parents got concerned, my uh, hunger overcame the trauma. Eventually that experience disappeared into the flow of time. I'm still a little worried about sewing needles every once in a while. I don't think about it all the time, of course. It'd be pretty rude if I poked at my food while eating lunch with you guys, wouldn't it? Of course, I know that no one would actually put a sewing needle inside of my food. But you're still a little scared? Well. Maybe I am somewhere inside my heart. So, you saw a sewing needle? Inside the Ohagi that me gave you? You saw a sewing needle inside of one? Yeah, I did. Inside that Ohagi, there was a needle, just as I feared. Why was I telling her about something that was just my imagination? Mion and Rena came to see me when I took a day off from school while I was sick. That never happened, so obviously my brain was just making it up. But I spoke to Rikuchan because she said she wouldn't make fun of me. Are you afraid of this Ohagi now? Do you feel like there might be a needle inside? Is that why you're not eating it? I realized that Mion and Reno were also looking at me. They were wondering why I was staring at the Ohagi without eating it. Oh, you don't like Ohagi, Keijon? If you don't, you don't have to eat it. Mion was assuming that I didn't like Ohagi. She didn't she felt bad for forcing me to eat something I didn't like. In truth, I f in turn, I felt guilty seeing the sad expression on her face. Sis, he must be convinced that you put something inside it. I immediately denied Shion's remark. No one else would understand what I'm saying. Even I didn't know. No, I know for sure that there's no sewing needle inside this Ohagi. A, a sewing needle? Why would this old man put something like that in there? <laughs> of course you wouldn't. You're not the type to visit and bring something with you out of pure generosity. You might play a trick with Tabasco sauce or something, but you'd never put needles inside. You'd never do something as dangerous as that. I know you would never do such a thing. I grabbed the Ohagi with my hand. As it brought it in front of my face, I felt the need to check it, just in case. But I told myself clearly, Hey, you wimp. Why are you going to stop being scared of that stupid comic book? Mion brought these Ohagi to treat everyone in the class. There's no way she'd put needles inside of these. I forced that stupid memory out of my brain and munched on the Ohagi. Mmm, it's delicious. Of course it is. There wasn't a needle inside, was there? No way. I'm really sorry. I was just caught up in a traumatic experience I once had. My heart had stopped pounding. I felt relieved. The next moment, I got the urge to say something to Mion. It wasn't the right thing to say, but I just felt like I had to say it. Hey, Mion. Huh? What is it? The Ohagi was delicious. Huh? <laughs> I'm really glad I brought them then, even though they were really heavy. I didn't know why I wanted to tell her again that the Ohagi was delicious. But I was glad I said that to her. I was finally released from that odd feeling. Well then, since Kei-chan overcame his fears and ate the Ohagi, you should eat the squash, Satsuko-chan. Mmm, it's so soft and sweet. 
How can that lunchbox always be so full of squash? You're going to give me a traumatic experience. <laughs> Shichan is trying so hard to stop Satsuko-chan from hating squash. She's so passionate about it. Maybe she sees her as her future little sister. <laughs> By the time I finished eating my ohagi, we had returned to our usual fun lunchtime. Keiichi, what if? Hmm? What if what? What if you really do see a needle inside your food? What would you do? That's not going to happen. Don't you threaten me, Riku-chan. Keiichi, what if it really happens? Riku-chan looks at me with a serious face as I joked around. What's gotten into her lately? Stop it. It's not going to happen. I don't believe it will. I had just overcome my stupid trauma after all that. That's why I made that firm statement. I understand. Keiichi, I'm sorry I'm asking you so much. If you see a needle inside your food, it's definitely some kind of mistake. Please don't ever believe that it's me's fault. You're just trying to tell me not to be suspicious of Mion, right? Of course I won't. I would never be suspicious of my friends. I raised my fist in the air. Riku-chan finally looked happy. She smiled as if she was relieved by my words. That's a good stopping point for today, then. Do, 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 do. Ding, 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 ding. All right. Come on. <laughs> oh, it's at the temple. Huh. Is it changing perspective again, I assume? Oh no, it's the auction. All right, we're stopping there though, so we'll just save right here. And we stop there. All right, next stream will be Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. with more sticks, Masters of Sha Master of Shadows. Y'all have a good rest of your day, evening, or morning. Bye-bye.